have decided turn on our podcast and you're ready to be entertained your daily dose of us are met we are the dream team stories make you think less of me we ain't always right we will have fun we talk about life we are not always polite Cause the Gym Teacher Dreams Powers Unite Gym Teacher Dreams We seem to be alright Gym Teacher Dreams Your laughter will explode Gym Teacher Dreams Thanks for listening to our show Do you smell What the Gym Teachers are thinking Oh yeah We are back here again Gym Teacher Dreams Podcast Bringing it to you Hope you're enjoying the last couple episodes that we've had, and of course all of them. And today, I guess Ray has talked about uh, a little more about you get to know about me. Is that That's what you're right. thinking? I've been wanting to do this for a little bit. I don't have a formal script, but I like a lot. I, I don't know. My brain is scrambled right now. I have a lot of thoughts. First, about our intro right there, where you were the Rock and I was Macho Man. Yeah, I'm bringing Macho Man back. We have I don't know. By the time this airs, maybe it's going to be about Halloween time. I don't know. Um, Halloween. I said Halloween. Sorry about that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not a English teacher. I'm a gym teacher. I have to do the finger thing when I do the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's just a weird thing. But anyway, yeah, we're uh, my wife. One of her colleagues is having a Halloween party, oh, and uh, yes. I'm bringing the Macho Man outfit back. And so. she uh, is she going to be Elizabeth? It'd be nice if we could work that out. Yeah, that would be awesome, and it'd probably be easy. She's got to have a dress like that, kind of right. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll do that. She has, like, two, like, go-to Halloween costumes. And uh, one of them is an M&M. Have you ever seen, like, the M&M costumes? You get the white hand, yes. hand, the hands. Yes. She's got that. She's worn it probably 27 times. And um, and the cheerleader. And you can insert your own joke there. I can see on your face you're thinking what everybody thinks. But whatever. Anyway, my wife's goal to uh, costume at school is, you know, she's a lit- literature mm-hmm. English teacher is she's misunderstood. Okay. That's so, good. yes. Um, so going back to uh, the episode, I, do, you, do you feel sometimes how I, you know, we talked about religion before, you know, you always say I'm more religious than you, but just like the stars align, you almost feel like God speaking to you type thing. Uh-huh. Like I just feel like everything kind of lined up. And even though I don't have a formal script. Just a lot of things I want to talk to that sort of dovetail into me, you know, wanting to have an episode about you telling us about you. Okay. So first, what our listening audience may not know again, but they can figure it out when they do math. Today was our countywide in-service day where we get together with a bunch of other schools and and teachers from the the county and we just, we have an in-service and jam about different things, education. So first, you want to talk about any of the sessions you attended, anything you learned, or uh, the first one I got it was like coding mm-hmm. and uh, technology. Um, apparently, uh, it's getting easier and easier, and the kids really enjoy it. Oh yeah! So we had we had a couple games that we tried, and um, it was it was all right. It was interesting, I, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and then I even though I'm I my card is good for another year, I just would like to go to CPR. CPR. You know, yep. yep, and all that, and just kind of review the new. Did you re up your card? I did not re up my card because I. I didn't want to pay $20. Bingo! But, <laughs> <laughs> but, I had a uh, feeling. but uh, the instructor, Mr. Reynolds, does a great job. Um, he does, but, he does you know, a great job. So, yeah. shameless plug, we know that Jim, you know, my boss, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Um, him or Kathy, but they're probably both listening. Uh, Mr. Reynolds kind of put in a plug, and I think everybody raised their hand and said that we're all in favor. Whole district getting trained in CPR. Because very honestly, if you and I get trained, and if we pay the 20 bucks to get the little card, someone could pass out or die in front of a different teacher that isn't certified, that doesn't have the card, then what? So if our whole district gets it, and he gave a great example from his own life, here he is, Sycamore Fire Department, who's trained in CPR and, and all that. Um, his daughter, well, his son was an athlete too, but his daughter, three points, three sport athlete recently, and when they're at these sporting events, there's no AED machine. You know, there may not be anybody trained in a That's what it's called, right? AED. Mm-hmm. Um, trained in CPR. So he sort of brings himself there prepared to help whoever. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. We, I would like our building 
to have everyone prepared. Because who knows who's supervising the after-school activity when so-and-so's grandma has a heart attack, you know? That's sort of the scenario that he laid out. Right. Well, if right. everybody's trained, then the you know person keeping the clock at the the football game or you know the supervisor at the volleyball match or whatever, they're all ready to help whomever. Yeah. You know, and when I didn't you know raise my hand to pay the twenty bucks to get the card that said I, I can do CPR, you know I'll you know throw under the bus. Mrs. Nelson kind of looked at me like, why not? I'm like Mrs. Nelson, if you have a heart attack right now and you're not breathing, I am going to perform to the best of my ability, CPR on you, whether I have a card or not, whether I paid the 20 bucks or not. I'm going to be a professional. I'm going to do the best job I can. So do I have to pay 20 bucks to save someone? You know what I mean? Yeah. If I save someone's life, do they care if I pay 20 bucks to get a little card that says, hey, he can do CPR? Yeah, probably not. I, probably that's not. my guess. I mean, I didn't because I got it last year. So I Me saw too. And I did, yeah. yeah. Well, now, correct me if I'm wrong. We didn't have to pay last year, right? Oh, That's I mean, oh, we did. I forgot about it. Yeah, we did. Dang it. See, my memory's bad. Yeah. I talk about it all the time. Yeah. So, anyway, so, we did yeah. pay, and I forgot about it. But speaking of that, another... Are you... You go ahead. No, I just, I was just going to move on. Okay, good. Because speaking of pain, I should just, you know, just being open, being honest. This is just me. My wife was a little upset about the whole stick in the car, on the car in the alley, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and she said she didn't know about it. But so she texted me when she was listening to it, and she said, "I we might not have been together. We, I wouldn't have been with you if you behaved that way." And I I text back. I said, "Well, the joke's on you. This happened while we were together," <laughs> and she didn't like that, of course. Um, but it was a, a seventy five dollar fine out of our joint mm-hmm. checking account or whatever. You know, I just I feel like I had to come home and I was very clean and open about. Yeah. The finances, but so you know, I, I think the point I'm trying to make is we all get forgetful sometimes. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know when I sometimes you know, we call my parents and mm-hmm. and they would tell me to something I'd forget to tell Heather or oh, Heather yes. knows something, you know, yes. that, that stuff. So, so they ended up at times the important stuff they uh communicate with both of us. Mm-hmm. That's a very good sure, idea. uh, what we both get there. We are probably on the uh verge of that because Brian and I don't always communicate things to each other, so I think we need. Yeah. The people around us to communicate with both of us, but yeah, back to today's events, um, the in service. So you were talking about coding, and then the CPR. Was there any others? Well, then I went. We went to the um, speaker, the, yeah, the keynote, keynote speaker. speaker. Yeah, and then I finished with a middle school or excuse me, elementary school PE one. Okay, and then we went to um, oh shoot. Uh, I couldn't remember. Oh, yeah, because the keynote was a double yeah. session. So. We went to one and it talked about um, just uh, kids and um, growing up and living in a tough home life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't think what it's called that right now. goes it right was, in line with yeah. the keynote speaker. Right, it did. And so, it, so, and that's another part of the stars aligning is the keynote speaker. I feel like it just kind of spoke to, hey, this goes in line with, you know, Piccolotti because... Um, Ironically, he had a story about his uncle smashing windows, but anyway, that went more along the lines with me. <laughs> Did you chuckle during that or no? A little okay, bit. Okay, little me bit, too. Yeah. Um, well, I might have been. I might have been a little sleepy at that point. <laughs> I don't remember that one real well. <laughs> I stayed up for most of it. Good, good. Um, I thought he was a great speaker. I could talk to that dude, you know, for for a long time, you know. So I was engaged. Yeah, no, he was. Good and stories, I, and I was engaged. But <clears> I might have. I, as you know. Uh, me and meetings don't always right. go. I get a little uh, sleepy. You're sitting in one spot, not yeah. moving much. It was it's chilly in there. That high school auditorium. And that's the way I like to sleep. Yeah, nice, cold. so yeah. I I get it. But I know he was very good. His basketball background. Yeah, you know, he probably that touched base with yeah. you or whatever. Yeah. Um, here's another thing where the stars lined up. Our listening audience doesn't know this, but before we pushed play on this little episode, Pick showed me or he, he pushed play on one of his new raps. And it was just outstanding. It was about your life and, and your struggles. And it was really aw- I mean, it was awesome. So I do hope it goes public sometime, but that's up to you. you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this keynote speaker, Matt De La Pena, is that right? Something like that, yeah. He He's an author, and his books are about sort of his experiences in life. So like your music is about your experiences. Mm-hmm. His books, although they're different characters, different settings, different right. scenarios, they really all speak about his 
background in one way or another, which I thought was pretty neat. So again, just for all these reasons, I just felt like this would be a good day to talk about Ryan eventually. Okay. So all right. first, we have this keynote speaker that speaks about his life or whatever, and he um, you know, really kind of talked like the first 40 minutes, 45 minutes about his life. Right. If Mr. Ryan Michael Piccolotti were to tell a story, not for 45 minutes, but for a little bit about your life. I don't think I could talk for 45 minutes. Starting at the beginning, tell us, tell us what you got. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I don't, oh geez, I don't know if I could, I could do Couldn't this. Couldn't do it? Uh, you know, I, back in the day, um, I was pretty sports driven. True that. So I spent all my days outside or, you know, playing Playing sports, having friends over, and and then I played baseball and basketball and football by myself. <laughs> Kept stats, you know. I would tack, I would get tackled, I would have you know defense. I'd be different guys. So, um, yeah, that's what I did when I was on my own. I would throw the ball anywhere I could. I just yeah, just couldn't get enough of, of sports. And so mm-hmm. you know, I talk. I I don't know if I've talked on on the podcast. Uh, you know, my parents are very gracious. They allow me to. Um, you know, do what I wanted to do and, and play the sport. So I didn't necessarily get all the, um, all the, uh, what's that, um, different aspects, you know, like how to, how to fix a car. Right, 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 um, right, right. I'm not, a su- you know, I don't always, a- or not able to fix things around the house. Do you regret that at all? Because I, sometimes I do. I wish maybe I would have taken advantage of, uh, they had vocational right, ed- right. at Fulton High School. Yeah. I wonder sometimes if, you know, but, but the, the trade off is, is those kids got on the bus at like 6 a.m. or something, you know. And as a yeah. youngster, I wasn't as much of an early bird as I am now. And then they were, if you're familiar with your geography, this vocational school was in Sterling. So they get on the bus at Fulton High School, take the bus to Sterling. They would have class there like all day. They would get back to Fulton High School at like 2.30. Our school day ended at like 3. Mm-hmm. But then if you're an athlete, you know, you just get ready, you know, get in the locker room, get ready, and you go for your sport. So you miss out on all that day-to-day socialization yeah. and interaction and really the fun, I think, that is high school and right, growing up right. and being a, a youth, as you like to say. Yeah. I don't regret it, but I wish I, you know, I did, I would have. Um, sure. You know, Maybe regret it. is yeah. a little bit of a strong word. Yeah. But. You know, because, you know, you, we generally do things that we're good at, and since mm-hmm. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Um, but I, how do you I, get I, good at it? It starts somewhere. talk about practice. We talk about practice. Um, yeah, but uh, the more I do it, the more, the worse. If you... For example, if you were to go downstairs, uh, that uh, I tried to put up some uh, hook and for bikes, <laughs> and there are about twenty holes I there trying it. to find trying to find the, you know the board to put it into. So, um, sports, uh, you know, all the time mm-hmm. back in the U. Uh, had you know had some had a successful career uh, playing sports. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I was kind of a shy guy. Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, I would have never guessed. Yeah, a shy guy. And then when I got my first, you know, that play, I was able once again. Played some baseball and basketball at the U. Yeah. Um, had some great, uh, had a lot of memories and a lot of fun there, and I wouldn't change anything for that. Uh, got married. Yeah. Um, you're kind of, you know, you're fast forwarding this. I, I had a little bit more, oh, okay. you know, that what I would have added or, or asked about it. Okay. I'll go let ahead. you know I want no, you to finish. No, go ahead. I'll stop right there. So, you know, you kind of skipped over maybe some of your, you know, formative years. You know, you said that you were involved in athletics and then you jumped into being shy and whatnot, but maybe give us a picture of, what like middle school Ryan Piccolotti was like at uh, Savannah Middle School? Or it was probably junior high, wasn't it? Yeah, it was junior high. Savannah oh, junior geez, high. I don't remember. Well, uh, when did you said you played sports all the time, and we know because we talked about it before yeah. that you were either second or third seat, and you know your oh, trumpet yeah. is that right? Oh, whoa, whoa! whoa I always whoa. forget. It's sax. I have saxophone. Sa- I should know yeah. this. Oh yeah, I guess I did play the saxophone. When when did that start? Uh, fifth grade. Fifth know? grade. Yep. Okay. So I think. and I you know played all the way through high school. Um, the funniest, one of the funniest stories is my parents wouldn't let me practice inside, uh, you know, and we had a, uh, what, what's it called? A three, um, season room, season room. Yeah. So I'd go out there and practice. Well, my buddy McFadden, yeah. they lived across the tracks and, okay. and not just like right across, they lived pretty far away and they said they could hear me um, oh, um, practice. Well in a way. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I enjoyed playing the saxophone. Obviously I enjoy music. Um, I didn't really enjoy marching band. Okay. And luckily, playing football, and yeah, I didn't, you didn't have, have to do to. it as much, but pet band. So were you the guy, sorry to interrupt, you play like the first, you know, I, I don't know, whether it's sophomore, I forget how it goes, because yeah. I wasn't in band, but I remember there was always like two or three or four kids in football uniform out there, you know, doing the band at, you know, between games. Yeah. Was, that was you? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. 
Yes, I did not enjoy that. Okay. Just, Pet band, uh, my own concert band was okay. But the saxophones, we get all the ba- background parts and those, so, uh, you know, all those other, that's why, that's why I mean, I don't like the trumpet, because they always got the great parts. Okay. And, you know, okay. the saxophones could ball, too. You know, yeah, whatever. right. And uh, jazz band was different, so I did it all. I enjoyed, yeah. I enjoyed music. So, sorry, I'm jumping around here a little bit, because you mentioned ball. So this Matt De La Pena, the keynote speaker, his first book was Ball is Life? Or, yeah. No, The Ball Don't Lie. Yeah, Ball Do you want to go read that book now all of a sudden? I might. Yeah. I might, yeah. And then there's a movie that was based on that book. Were you familiar with the movie? No, Neither I was, was not. I. Well, I'm going to check it out, aren't you? Uh, yeah, Darn yeah. No. Now that book that he read at the end, Love, mm-hmm. I don't know where you at on that. Because I, honestly, I'm not going to say emotional, but it sort of connected with me how... If, if you haven't read the book, maybe check it out and, and read it. And it just, it kind of spoke to me because it, it talks about how love is maybe some of your childhood experiences mm-hmm. that do, you don't really think of as love. Like he mentioned burnt toast. Yeah. Mine wasn't burnt toast, but every Sunday we had spaghetti. Yeah. And my mom always made it as like meat sauce. And I hated having meat in my spaghetti sauce as a kid, but you had to do it. But now that's sort of like a warm fuzzy to me. Right. And very now, very honestly, now as an adult, I like meat sauce. But back then, you know, so talking about like childhood experiences. Oh man, we're going deep thoughts. Kind of, I mean, I don't know if it was so that deep. So one, I guess you talk about love is the, I, I liked cereal and toast. Yeah. So every morning I would have some sugary cereal and then I always had a bowl at night. Yeah. But I also would have. We're still about, talking cereal, right? Yeah, cereal. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well played there. Um. Then I would have, you know, also, but the peanut butter toast. I love peanut butter toast. Uh-huh. My grandpa and grandma Piccolati, when we go over there, they would make us toast. And for some reason, it always tasted better. Yeah. Yep. That's so they'd always make a toast. I'd have to have peanut butter toast there because it tasted better. Yeah. My other was, my other grandparents, they had the, the pink peppermints. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they always had those out, and I always loved going. The sort of melt-in-your-mouth kind yeah, of ones? Yeah, I always yeah. like going If there. you can handle not biting on them? Yeah, yeah, so those I always remember. And over there, we always had salmon patties, Ooh. which I do not like salmon anymore, but I remember eating a, you know what? Did I you ha- Oh, so you liked them? Or you yeah, I did, yeah. but now I, I can't really do salmon. My mom used to make salmon patties, and it's so funny you say that. I have sort of had the hankering to make them on my own, mm-hmm. you know, because I did. I liked them when I was a mm-hmm. kid. We just, you know, I haven't had them in forever or yeah. whatever. You know, my wife makes tuna patties, okay. which are very good. I, yeah. I like those. But yeah, the um, salmon patties I remember from my parents, okay. my grandparents in Fulton. In Fulton. Uh, this is, <laughs> it wasn't going to play into this segment, but it just, does it boggle your mind a little bit? I know when people say small world, yeah. we're talking again, Northwestern Illinois, towns that are like 20 miles away from each other. So it's not like big world. Right. But your grandparents, the way that you described it to me, they literally live like three blocks away from where I grew up. Doesn't really? that like blow your mind? It does. Because right, it was like kitty corner from the funeral home, right? Yeah. And like a kind of a half a block away from the bowling alley, you said, right? Are we talking the same area? So what's that? So when you turn that main street, right? Tenth and no, 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 that would be Twelfth Avenue. So no, 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 Tenth. So, so like because it was small. a car car dealership or something, right? Yes. Yeah. I, their house was the one right across the street from that, right on the yes. corner. Yeah. Yes. Right on the corner. Yeah. It was. You said red brick or something like that. Yeah. Was it next? Yeah. Year? So, yes, if you literally go, like, three blocks towards the river, uh huh, it might even be two blocks. Yeah. Because we lived right by the high school. Okay. And then you go one block south towards the high school. That's, like, where I grew up. That's So, two or maybe three blocks one way and one block south. That's crazy. The difference between your grandparents' yeah. house and where Yeah, we were, you know, blockish away from Bowling Alley, and we would yeah. take that that road, and we'd walk down, down that road all the time with mm-hmm. them. So, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so that was just a segue. Yeah. So you, you kind of gave us a small picture of middle school Ryan Piccolotti. Anything you want to add? No, I think, um, you know, as one of the things when we went to school, we played a lot of wiffle ball, and that's yeah. when I was hanging out with my cousin Bob and up at Park Street, and we would play wiffle ball, and then at night it was always spotlight tag. Okay. And we'd run through everyone's high yards and, and play off. Sp- no, no, no one ever complained. You're cool about it? Damn. Yeah. So, Such a different place. You know, and then as we went to high school, we started um, hanging out. It was some different, you know, made some new friends and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, as, as Aaron affectionately called us, you know, because we were all big um, Young Guns fans that, <laughs> hey, you know, yes, we were you pals. Were. Okay. We were pals. That's from the if movie? You, yeah, it's from the movie. I need to give that yeah. another spin. Yeah. I watched yeah. it when I was like 10. And, and I, I would be, I would get, I would be wrong if I tried to quote um, Billy the Kid when he talked about the meaning of pals. Okay. Um, but there's definitely a meaning with that. So then we, you know, we hung out 
and uh, you know, sp- and spent a lot of time together playing basketball. And and well, once again, speaking of that, I'm going to interrupt if you don't okay. mind. Again, going back to today's keynote speaker, he talked about how basketball sort of took him out of his shell yeah. of you know shyness and mediocrity. Mostly in the classroom, he was a very average student. He said, mm-hmm. but once he had success playing basketball and was playing with older kids, and those older kids are like, "Hey, we want him on our team because he's good." I mean, it kind of made me think of right. you because you yeah, played with a again. Lot of older you kids, were good. Yeah. You got pulled up and stuff like that. Well, did you have similar experiences at all? Uh, did I, that help bring you out of your shyness? Sports. Or? The sports were is my outlet. Yeah. So I, you know, I and it's not that I was super shy, but I was. I, you know, I didn't. I wasn't out really make friends with new people but, right you know i had my core but i just was uncomfortable with social situations mm-hmm. but uh, you know, obviously sports really brought out the confidence and, yeah. and the almost the arrogance as um yeah uh, that uh, <laughs> as i I'd, had shown on the court or field right uh so and then um yeah we, you know, we spent a lot of late nights uh sneak you know sneaking out and you said around, that i can't believe that. running around um nothing major but we you know we would have some fun and I'm just going to interject here with a personal story here. Uh, my wife's not going to like me anymore. but um, So, she, you know, she was didn't like the story that happened to me like 15, 20 years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. But at least I never snuck out. That was what Jake did. Jake would sneak out. <laughs> not Ray. I stayed home. Mm-hmm. I, you know, but here Ryan sneaks out and your wife probably doesn't give you the business about it, right? No. Nope. You're probably sneaking nope. out to see her, huh? We did, yeah, that's one of the good stories uh, when we snuck out. This is when we were in high school. Yeah. Her graduation night. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, it was, we snuck out and uh, we were with another guy who was dating her step her stepsister and then my buddy Aaron um, you know uh, was uh, I wouldn't say fell in love but was uh, <laughs> came because he wanted to uh, you know see Heather's cousin from Nebraska nice and so that's so we snuck out and that's the time where um, Aaron was loud and, and they, they had just gone to bed apparently and we woke up an uncle yeah and he screamed so we went sprinting and we were hiding and then got they got in the trucks and they were looking for us and oh um, it was kind of almost like staying by me as long as we walked cause yeah we walked probably over five miles that night wow yeah but that was that was those are those are the memories that you don't forget that's right so, yeah. good stuff so I mean that's I, I forget where we were when you I were, cut you off. Yeah, you were talking about the, just the basketball and or sports. Yeah, 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 playing with older kids and confidence yeah. and all that. Yeah. So we're good with high school. Sure. Because honestly, when I had this thought of you know let Ryan tell Ryan's story or whatever, I was thinking from high school to college. So you went to University of Dubuque. Talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. I would imagine there were a lot more Division three schools that were interested in your services. Is that accurate or no? That is not accurate. No. I it was heard, UD or nothing, or what? I'd heard a little bit from Aurora. Okay. Um, and that, really, that was it. Okay. So, uh, did you even go visit Aurora no, when you were younger? No. So, it was UD? It was UD. It. Coach Davidson came to a game mm-hmm. and talked, and then um, we had an all-star game that they used to do at Freeport for okay. people around, and he was there for that, and so, you know, I, I went we there. best friends. Yeah. Basically. Yep. That takes a lot of steam out of a, <laughs> my, my, my little episode <laughs> yeah. here, but... Uh, so then your days at UD, because you had mentioned earlier, you got married, but I don't want to get there yet. Yeah. But let's tell us about UD up until marriage, because I mean, that's unique to be married in college, which you were, right? Uh, no, right. Oh. We, we got married kind of right afterwards. Okay, okay. So okay. yeah, we were living together <clears throat> my last couple of years. Ooh, okay. Um, so, yeah. And sin, that's interesting. Yes, yes. All right, yes, well we then were. tell me about college. Uh that you know, I didn't. I wasn't much for the bar. You know, as I got older or whatever, I didn't go to many parties during the bar scene because of my social anxiety. Yeah, I didn't like uh, be, put myself in those situations. But, but we still had a good time. You well, know, I our na- our obviously our floor had some other basketball players, sure. and so and we uh, ended up you know having good times there. Mm-hmm. Lots of Tech Mobile, yeah, uh, tournaments and seasons and and just kind of silliness. Yeah, um, that does re- remind me of the. Tecmo Bowl seasons and, and tournaments and all that. I, I had kind of forgotten about it, I guess. I'd be but. pissed when <clears throat> you wouldn't do play your game because you you couldn't play it your holds game everyone else until up. that yeah, guy played. That's so right. yeah. Um, but it, dang it, I lost my train of thought a little bit. But oh, so meeting people because I remember, I guess growing up, and this is one thing I feel blessed. I guess you know I'm the second of four kids, and I do feel like in almost all situations. And Jake listens, but whatever. Shameless plug for my bro- my older brother Jake. He right. sort of paved the way for me. I never really had to experience anything 
for the first time yeah. because he always did things and I, I was there as like maybe a spectator or a fan or the younger brother. So I got to see how things work. Right. So when it was my turn to do things, I was like old head. Yeah. I knew how to do it. But when I went to college, like meeting new people, that was new and that's when my I was became very aware of my social awkwardness. Mm-hmm. Um, and you would agree I bet you're kind of the same way you said yeah I just you're not like good it. with that social interaction. yeah I just didn't like it yeah so at college was it something you had to do or something you stayed away from I just didn't I, I didn't think it was necessarily necessary me and my buddies didn't you know we didn't really your buddies were the basketball team yeah well you know part of it yeah and so we just didn't just didn't do that kind of stuff I will say um shoot was I lost my train of thought now one thing um with that so dang it well, anyway, you know, going back to what the college is, you know, my wife was a couple years older than I yeah. was, and she and she um, was going, decided after the first year, um, she went and... To the U? No, she went somewhere else. I'm not going to... The WIU? Me. No. No? Okay, and anyway, sorry. she just, she did more um, having fun than school, so she moved on and decided that uh, she's going to go to school with me. Well, then she had a couple of friends that were in Western, and she decided she was going to go to Western before okay. I decided what I was going to do. So then I just decided oh, I was going to right. go to the U, and that's three hours away for, for everyone. And that didn't go well. Right? Long-distance relationships are very challenging. Sure. So my freshman year, we were apart, and um, you know we broke up for a couple weeks. Oh. And then she was home, and we were home for the summer, and I just couldn't live without her. Yeah. And she, she'll say that. But, yeah, so we got back together, and then uh, one more year, I think she was down at Western, and my junior she went moved back. Okay. She went up to the U, and mm-hmm. we started living together, got out of the dorm life. Um, so... But we, you know, the dorms, the two years, that was plenty. So I guess, you know, maybe I was on the right track. So you guys lived together off campus yes. while you were still in college. Yes. Okay. But you had already said that you aren't really the social butterfly. Yeah. Or you weren't the yeah. social butterfly. Um, so I guess it didn't really impact you. But again. Yeah. I'm a pretty <clears throat> rule stickler. I didn't break many rules. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't start pertaining. Yeah. The quote unquote beverage, um, the, um, college lifestyle. I did not, I did not do, I did not do it in high school <clears throat> either. Okay. I did not have a drink until I was 21. That, is that legit for real? That's too legit. Did not have a drink of alcohol until you're 21. Correct. I want to shake your hand. Dude. That's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it just I was too worried that it would you know make mess up. And, yeah, you know I would miss sports and it would um, disappoint my parents mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. and I just I, it wasn't something it wasn't something I you know felt right. like I needed to do and I still don't need to do I, it very often. Sincerely, I am proud of that and I, mean, I think that's awesome. I, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would certainly do it a different way for sure. Well, if I if I had to overdo it again, I might do it a little more than what I did. Is I'm, that right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So funny. Yeah. But anyway, so we're at college now. So you're yeah. graduating and then... Well, we go back to... Fr- I mean, yeah, I, go wherever going you want. Uh, freshman year of college, you know, I, I told you we took a basketball trip to Mexico City yes. and... Acapulco, and that was um, my life lesson and memories that you never mm-hmm. forget. I can't tell all the stories, but um, you know, I can t- I can say that going to Mexico City and after getting off the plane, we had to go play a game right away. And as you start to come into Mexico City, there were just miles and miles of cardboard boxes along the road that people live in. It was mm-hmm. just you know, right there. It was, it was just shocked that we weren't in Kansas anymore. You <laughs> so know? you get off the the plane. You see that, yeah. and now you gotta go play. Now we gotta go play. So your hearts are broken for all these people, and now you gotta get your yeah. mind focused on basketball and jet lag and all that. Yeah, and we went out and played. We didn't, you know, we didn't <clears> play very well. We lost, but um, the, that was probably the game that was that had the most fans, and it was it was, mm. it was fun. Yeah, um, but yeah, then we played a couple more games. Uh, yeah, I don't think he listened yet, my buddy, my, my buddy Craig. <laughs> I was hoping you'd my buddy that. Craig, who I love him to death. Uh, Got upset in one game and punted the ball up and I never up to a ceiling and and got a tactical um, for that. So I thought we were going to get in a fight with uh, one of our best player head butted a guy that looked like uh, the evil guy on um, uh, Double Impact, um, John Claude Van Damme movie, okay. you know, okay. with the bright blue eyes and the dreads. Um, you know, so yeah, interesting. Then we went to Acapulco and uh, messed around, and that can be another story later. Sure, but. Uh, yeah, and then playing baseball, we went up to the Metrodome and played yeah, yeah. Um, instead of going to F- Florida. Coach said you never, never do it because you would lose games because of the weather in Florida. And then, like, two years later, he took his team down to Florida. So, Coach <laughs> Rima, I love you too, but come on now, kid. Right. So then we're done with college? Or? Sure. Yeah, then we got <clears throat> married. I, yeah, I didn't want to rush you through any of this. Nope. <clears throat> so what was it like looking for a job then? Uh, I You know, that year that... Um, after I first got married, um, 
or right, yeah, the year before we got married, I kind of um, was uh, assistant coach. Coach Davidson had left coaching, mm-hmm. um, took a business in Minnesota, and then came back to coaching at Clark. Yeah. Which, if you've never been to Butte, Clark, UD, and Loris are like a mile apart. It's like a triangle. It's so. almost like Duke. Uh, West Virginia and North Carolina, right? Aren't they the Bermuda Triangle? Or who is it? Uh, is it? I don't know. I know Duke, Duke, North Carolina, and is it North NCC? Carolina State. I okay, think. okay, okay. But anyway, yeah. so I can imagine right. the basketball, but, but even tight, but even tighter than that. So um, I helped him at Clark, but you know I was getting paid two thousand five hundred dollars, and you know we'd been married, and uh, you know Heather was, I, I think, even expecting or whatever okay. right now. So. Um, I decided to leave the college and, you know, I had to find a real job. So I got, you know, took my first coaching, teaching job at Stockton and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and went from there. But Well, so did you, see, here, here's what I did. I applied at like 600 schools or whatever, yeah. interviewed at like 25. I mean, did you have a similar experience? I applied you... for quite a few, maybe not 25, but I applied for some jobs. Yeah, I applied for one in like Newton, Iowa. Yeah. Um, but that was the, oh, I, I, I take that back. I had an interview at a town called Morris. No. uh Yeah. Oh, my from goodness. From Savannah. But they're just, but at the time, I don't know now, but I, they, they're uh, elementary and high school or separate districts. Okay. And so I was applying for an uh, elementary job and... You know, I talked, I want to be a coach, coach and they just didn't school. sound like that would work out very well for okay. the schedule. So Interesting. I forgot. So I had applied for two places. And two? Yeah. Stockton and Morris. Yes, or Stockton and Morris, yes. And Okay, you got it, Stockton. It got the Stockton job, yes. All right. Probably by name alone. I don't know about that, but, no. um, you know, the, uh, I got that job. And where did Skills Mound fall into this? Uh, I was there at Stockton for three years, which um, if any of those, I, I mean, I miss those people I work with. I worked with there. You um, went back to see him not long ago. I, I remember that. Anytime I, you know, go by, I feel dirty. It's like going to Savannah. Of course, you see you see your parents yeah. and see Heather's parents, <clears throat> um, but you feel dirty if you don't get Manny's. Yeah. Well, if I go through Stockton, I feel dirty, at least not to knock on someone's house to go see. Yeah. So right. I, we had just done, we drove by and I stopped at Terry's house, a couple, who I taught, taught with uh, less than a month ago. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Stockton, I mean, we would have a good time after football. We were all young. We all had young kids and... So we'd get together and... um, And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm so sorry about this. Again, how, you know, I I just feel like it was divine intervention. It's Terry's wife, am I right? Well, no, this is Terry Court. She she was my teaching partner. Okay. And was the girls' basketball coach. Okay. Sorry. Fox. But but Brad. Brad Fox was a football coach. His wife's brother, like, taught in Oswego. And I sat next to him at a football game one time. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so we were talking and he was talking about how his... In-laws were from this crazy small town that loved football and has told stories about his mother-in-law. And then we come to find that we had, you and I had yeah. this small connection with these random people. <laughs> and uh, it's just crazy, right? Yeah, because I went on, when I went on my honeymoon, <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, going to get in the elevator, and there was a former teammate from the U. No way. Yep, they had just gotten married. So, yeah, it's everywhere you go. I, yeah. My parent, my family jokes that everywhere we go, no matter where we go, mm-hmm. I know someone. My wife kind of says the same thing. You know, I mean, when you're big, when you're a big yeah. deal. Well, that with all the coaching, and everyone you meet, and I yeah. was I was at four districts. Yeah. Um, you know, before my first, you know, seven years of teaching. So yeah, you, you find out you you meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So you're at Stockton now, three years in. Yep, and and I had felt you know being a young t- coach that I was I was ready to be the head coach yeah. and. And um, the, the Stockton coach was going to stay, and then so I took job at Scales Mound and was a head basketball coach there, and and uh, just wasn't the place for me. Yeah, how many um, years were you there? One year, only one year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, just it just it didn't feel feel right. No, okay. I, I had built some relationships with some couple kids, so it was challenging to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but and uh, wasn't it your PE? Teacher, teacher friend at yeah. Scales Mount. Yes, you speak so highly of them. You were only together. Yeah, we for were one only year. together one year. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I would have thought ten years for the stories you tell. Oh no, no, yeah. that's that's uh, you know one year there and then one and done. Uh, You're like a, a Kentucky basketball player, one and done. <laughs> I know it. I felt bad because you know you go, you think you got to stay in pro, at least three years at places, but yeah. uh, the job opened up at the at the Genoa GK, at, at GK I Cogs. Mean, and um, at the time, the head basketball coach for the boys and girls were up, and the, and uh, the boys coach was already there, and they offered to him, and so they said, "Do you want to coach girls?" I'm like, "I didn't like where I was, so why not? I'll give yeah. it a shot." Okay. So then I was. So that was your first experience coaching girls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And then three years there, after that, a uh, job opened up at uh, Sycamore. Um, you were only at GK for three years. Huh? Yes. I see, again, I just felt like yeah. you were there longer. Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, one of the takeaways, I feel, you talk about how you don't like these social interactions, but in short times at these places, you built yeah. good relationships. I did, I did. And I, one thing with Stockton was, um, you know, I wasn't, what, as I just said, I wasn't much of a drinking man, and I didn't really do a whole lot of beer, so I would drink mixed drinks, whatever, mm-hmm. and when we would get together, and, and the joke was... Um, they first off, they would always put an umbrella in my drink. Yeah, yeah. And the second thing is that's good fun. Yeah, Coach Fox said, you know, the first year uh, they couldn't get me to say anything, and the second year they couldn't get me to shut up. <laughs> and and that's probably true. And that's that is, how I that's was. That's funny, but yeah. I, you know, I I would err on the side of not saying too much that first year because you don't want to ruffle feathers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Brad had just, he had been the assistant coach for Coach Boyle, mm-hmm. who was one, I don't know if he still is, but had the most wins in Illinois football Hall history of Famer, for a while. For sure, yeah. 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 So, you know, we, uh, you know, Coach Boyle was around and, you know, he's a great dude too. Yeah. Except for uh, he did not, he thought throwing was a. You can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were three things that could go wrong and like, or could happen and two of them were bad is what he used to say. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, then, you know, at Sycamore was there and mm-hmm. kind of moved on, but. I don't know if you remember, and when I uh, when I had my interview, there was no one there for the teaching program. It was just all coaching. There was yeah. a, a bunch of people, so uh, you know the middle school um, department did not have any say. Yeah, and we had some strong-willed um, leaders in the PE department that weren't too happy. This is Ryan Michael Piccolotti's opinion. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that uh, she would agree with me. Oh, uh, um, anyway, I agree. I know yeah. we've had this talk. Yeah, she has had this talk yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it, it turned out well, but they weren't happy. That yeah, they didn't get the say. So. And it was very awkward because I knew that because they told me about it before. So when I first went to the middle school, you know, um, being shy and uncomfortable with that, um, I remember I, you know, they had a problem because I didn't shake their hands when I saw them and. It was because I knew they weren't happy about it, yeah. and I'd already started the uh, that process of my anxiety. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, we um, I think hopefully she found out quickly that I was a good fit there. Yeah, and, she and, had uh, said many times that it worked out well. She just didn't really like how it was. Handled. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then we had a lot. Of, we we had a lot of good times at the old old. That's right. School. We did, and then obviously moved on. But yep. we can talk about adulthood another time. But yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I, there are no regrets anything sure. in anything I do, but there are things I'd like to go back and change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that's all I had. I just wanted to yeah. know a little bit about Ryan Michael Piccolotti, and in my head I was thinking, you know, start with like late high school and go from there, but today kind of spoke with me about just things that came up, you know, through the in-service and especially with the keynote speaker, and I'm like, let's go for it, you know? I know. it, But, yeah, I wish I would have. I found out that, you know, you and I writing songs and yeah, and that. Was a, yeah. And that I'm a little more creative than I thought, mm-hmm. and so um, songs are coming easier and easier. And maybe we'll put out an al- album sometime. Um, but uh, it is it is a lot of fun to write songs. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I kind of like he wrote poetry in yeah. the back of the, yeah. the classroom. I don't know if I I know I did write some poems, but it wasn't like a regular thing. But I would draw, you know, and uh, you know, I think I was always like a coach at heart. I'd be doing some plays in the background and yeah. strategies or whatever and. Uh, but I was like a closet, one of those guys, just like him. I didn't tell a lot of people about yeah. that, you know. Uh, In terms of... I like, wish I had some of my artwork now that I was drawing back then, you know. Geez, you, could you be my illustrator? Maybe. But going back, you know, as as a as a player, you know, I wasn't... I call my spot an athletic, a sport athlete. Because mm-hmm. I wasn't super athletic, but I understood the game, understood yeah. angles. Mm-hmm. But... Um, would play all the time, but I would study more than just being fans. So I kind of learned how to play by watching. The yeah, game where a lot, right. the a lot kids, of people don't do that. Kids don't do that much right. anymore. Right. They, so then they don't quite understand it. But I, I knew that once, and I've told the story that once I figured out I wasn't going to the NBA, which was about seventh, eighth grade year, I knew I wanted to be a coach. And yeah. I, you know, I followed sports mm-hmm. as if I was um, a coach. You know, following it and watching it much more in depth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you were alone in that. I feel like a lot of kids that even go to games they just can't watch it through the lens of you know i can improve by things i see mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. other people do you now, know they may go out and try some fancy move yeah um which is not bad either mm-hmm. i mean but yeah they don't it's see the understanding how it's the angles and the little things that you do yeah. to, to yeah to succeed mm-hmm. so i don't know how we're doing for time there mr well Ryan, it's almost 40 minutes oh what the 
Dang, you should have cut us off like 20 minutes ago. Well, you know, we're well, talking what happens. I'll stop uh, dragging it out. You ready to close it yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for listening, and this was another episode of the Gym Teacher Dreams podcast. This was all about Ryan Michael Piccolotti, and maybe we'll have some adult stories later, he said. Yes. Thank you for uh, listening, and hopefully uh, um, those who didn't know me know me just a little better, and the boys that I know will have to tell stories like the time McCormick saved my life. Ooh, can't wait. Yeah. All right. Until next time, America. Tell a friend. Love you. Bye.